We greet everyone with the peace of Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to the Word of God, ask those who can to stand up at this moment. I'm going to read on Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. 31, verse 15, 16, and 17. Let's see in the projection. Thus says the Lord. Thus said the Lord. A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for, the, for her children because they are no more. Thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border. Lord, we want to praise you and glorify your holy name. Praise the holy name. For you at this moment, we're having fellowship with you. Once again, bless your people and your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the Lord, in verse 31, verse 32 of Jeremiah, speaks of a promise. And the promise is to bring his people or bring back the people that was spread amongst many nations, the people that was led captive to Babylon, they would return to their nation, to their land, and to their country. And the word tells my brethren that the Lord, He speaks of a time, a time where the Lord, our God, He was going to be a God of all generations. A God of my grandfather, God of my father, my God, God of my children, God of my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, great great grandchildren, and on and on. Where God would be able to reach every nation. And the Lord speaks about this time, a time where. He would appear, he would come up, he would manifest, he would reveal himself. And he would make this apparition, this manifestation. The word says that in order to manifest his, the great love that he has towards his people, the great love that he has to his humanity, an eternal love, with an eternal love, I loved you. And here it shows the great love of God. There is a song that says, great love, right? This one that he is playing on the keyboard. And when we pick up the Old Testament, when it speaks about this operation, this appearance of Christ, the Messiah, of Jesus, the Savior, and also, it speaks about the love of God. Because God loved the world in such a way that He sent His only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, may not die, but may be able to reach from this Son of God, may reach eternal life. And here it demonstrates a great love of God towards man. 
In the word also says that besides revealing himself and manifesting himself, he would also attract and the attractive I would cause people to go and look and would come towards him was because he was going to manifest his goodness, his benevolence. And in the book of Isaiah, they speak so much about the Messiah, the, the sent one, the anointed of God, the wonderful counselor, mighty God. It says that the Lord he would raise his hand towards the nations. And why would the Lord raise his hand towards the nations? Because before the plan of God was only for Israel. But when he raises his hand towards the nations, it is for the fulfillment of that war that he gave all the way back in the time of Abraham and in you will be measured all the nations so he raises his hand to bless all the peoples tongues tribes and nations and when we go all the way to revelations we see the fulfillment of this who are those where they came from the ones who are washed their garments and whited them out with the blood of the lamb and he was able to see, to see people from every place, from every part of the world, from every corners of the earth. Why is that? Because one day the Lord rose his hand to bless all the nations. The word says, my brethren, that besides raising his hand to bless, the Lord would also uh, raise a, a flag. What is to raise? Is to bring it up. And what is the purpose of a flag? A flag is, is an identification of a kingdom, of a nation. When Jesus was placed on the cross of Calvary, a banner was raised in order to show that man that accepted him as their savior, as a nation, as a kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. To give an identification to the servant of God. So that they would know that if he pass from this life, he is going to live another life in eternity. My kingdom is not of this world. The land is a heavenly land. And all of this is to manifest the law, the grace and the mercy of the Lord towards the life of man. So, chapter 30, 31 speaks of this, of a time that the Lord was going to do all those things. Jesus has already done all those things. The, ran, the hand was risen, the risen. The hand was risen. And uh, he, was, he died on the cross of Calvary to show his, his benignity and the love towards man. And the word says, my brethren, that there was going to come a day. And on day, the Bible says that the watchmen, they will cry out. They will cry out above the mount, a fertile mount, which is called the Mount of Ephraim. They will give news to the people, to the people of God, to, to the chosen ones of God. And the news was going to be, rise up. Why is that? Because this is the moment for us to go up to Zion. Get ready. Because the period of captivity is over. Now you're going to rise up. Why is that? Because you are going to go up to Zion. And we are waiting for this day. The day in which we are getting up, getting ready. Where the lamps are being lit. The ways are being girded. Why is that? Because the Lord is warning, is proclaiming that Jesus is coming. It's time for us to go to our land, to our nation. It's time for us to enter into our nation. The great day is arriving. 
There's so little time left, uh, like the song says, for us to go up to Zion. And the Lord says that in those days, the days of the proclamation, when the people get up to go up to Zion, were going to be days in which the Lord will be operating in an extraordinary way. The Lord said that who is going to be congregate people, bringing people from every corner of the earth to that place was a gathering, it's a solemn assembly, a, a holy congregation. And the Bible says, my brethren, that at that time of rescue, because in those days, the cry was going to be a cry of rescue, bring a day to bring back the ones who had been lost or went astray because they were no longer present there in the midst of the congregation. And the Lord says that those were going to be days of joy when the people of the Lord was going to eat of the wheat, the oil, and the land. And we are living those days where the church is, is feeding off of the word, the revealed word. We are living those days in which the Lord has provided the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon His people, the joy of salvation, the lamb, the sacrifice, the holocaust, salvation in Christ Jesus. So those were days of joy. And the moment of departure, the moment to go up to Zion is a day of joy. The word says that in those days, the people of God should bring joy and glorify the name of the Lord. It was not a day of sadness, but it was a day of plenty, of blessings, of benefits to the Lord upon His entire church, upon His congregation, upon His nation. But my brethren, then we come to this part of this passage where the Lord for three times he says thus has the Lord a voice was heard, heard in Ramah thus says the Lord lament and bitter Stop the voice of crying, and his children are going to return to his land. The Bible itself says that each word needs to be confirmed by two or three witnesses. And it was said three times, Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. Why is that? Because thus says the Father, thus says the Son, thus says the Holy Spirit. So that it would be a guarantee. Only the word of God would have been already sufficient. But it, it is saying that all three gathered to guarantee to us that He has provided our departure to eternity. It also says, Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. The Lord says that those were going to be days of joy, but a voice was not a voice of joy. It was a voice of sad. It was a lamentation and a bitter weeping. Rama means a uh, high place. So, in other words, in eternity. In eternity, God heard of the cry of a woman. A woman was crying. Because she knew that those days were going to be days to rise up to go to Zion, she knew that those days were going to be those days were going to be days of joy, a day of go back and return to their nation, a nation where it flows honey and milk. But in that high place, she was crying, she was anguished. The word says that her name was Rachel. Rachel means lamb 
my brother and sister, every time that a lamb of the Lord cries, the Lord hears it. Hannah cried. Remember this? And her voice went all the way to heaven. A woman who was sterile was now the mother of Samuel. Blessed be them in the Lord. This individual here, Rachel, she was sterile. She could not bore a son. She was anguished. She was afflicted because she would not produce fruit. She would not have a baby. And she said, Lord, give me a son, otherwise I will die. If I will not produce fruit, I would simply die. The word says that God remember of Rachel. And the Lord gave two children to Rachel. The first is called Joseph. That means the same thing as Jesus. The one who adds, the one who blesses, the one to produce fruit, the one who multiplies. And the younger son was supposed to be called Benoni, son of my affliction. But then the father, he said, no, it's not going to be called Benoni. It's going to be called Benjamin, the son of my right hand. Because the affliction, the suffering, the crying, the son of the right hand of, of the Lord. He was going to pay for the love of each one of us on the cross of Calvary. We're no longer children of affliction, but we're children of the right hand of the Father. It's written there in John. And God gave, gave him the power to be children of God to the ones who believe in his name. Once uh, they are not under the will of the man or the flesh, but the will of God. So the children of Rachel, they were fruit of a miracle. They were not of the will of Jacob or the will of Rachel, but there was there were an action, an operation of God upon the life of that woman. And now she was worried. We're going to go back, we're going to return. And how about our children? And my descendants. Hasn't the Lord said that He was going to bless? That our children were going to be multiplied? If you take uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what is the promise? Believe in Jesus and you will be saved. So who is going to be saved? You, you and your household. You and your descendants. So the concern was the concern for that moment, we're going to return, we're going to go up. Lord to God, hallelujahs. But Lord, how about my son? Lord, my daughter. The Bible says, my Brandon, that can a woman forget so much about her son that she's raising? that she's not going to be have compassion of them, the son of her own womb. So Rachel, she was she was had compassion. She was anguished. Why is that? Because that son was generated in her womb. She know she knows how much costed the birth of that child. And how many of us parents don't know how much it costs and how much it costs to this day? The children that have been generated. But then, Rachel could have said, hey, but I'm going to go up. Everyone is going to go up. But my son is continues to be in, on Babylon. Is, is he not going to be rescued? Is he not going to return? And here the word says, Has God forgotten all my children? Look, my mother may even forget. Rachel didn't forget, but a, a mother may even forget. But the Bible says that, And even if the mother forgets, I, the Lord, however, will never forget of you. 
Amen, my brethren. The Lord has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten of your descendants. He has not forgotten the promise that He has made on your house. All the promise. Every word that the Lord has says will be fulfilled. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, it is this moment. It was a moment of fulfillment of prophecy. It was a moment of blessing, rejoicement, praise, and adoration, glorification. Lamentation and bitter tears. And Rachel cries about the children without admitting comfort for her because it no longer exists. The word says, does not take the shape of this world. Rachel was not comfortable with this world. She said, I cannot accept it. Not that she was complaining with God, but she did not accept the condition of the place where her son was located. And that was pleasing to the Lord. Every time that we intercede to the Son, to the one who was being generated, every time the church intercedes for the Son who was has been generated, the Lord hears. The Lord is pleased. And the Lord has an answer. Thus says the Lord. Refrain your voice of weeping and your eyes from tears. The Lord will dry up our tears. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, he, he, the Holy Spirit brings comfort to us. I'm going to bless. I will reach you with my mercy. Refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be re rewarded. Sometimes we speak a lot about salvation. That's the most important. Salvation is the greatest gift. It's greater than our own life. However, the Lord says that here, if here, down here we seek first the kingdom of God and salvation, everything else will be added on to you, to our reward. The reward for, for work reward for effort. Nobody's saved by deeds, because by sa faith we are saved, not by deeds. But the reward is work you, that we can re uh, reward, we can receive because of work. So Rachel worked incessantly for her children. And the Lord remembered that was a reward for her, that was a blessing for her, there was a reward that was a gift for her. There is a reward for your work, so thus says the Lord. And what is the reward? What is the compensation from all this work? The compensation is that, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. Look where the sun was on the land of the enemy. But the Lord of Rachel, the Lord of Abraham, our God, that God has power, even on the land of the enemy. He goes to the land of the enemy, gives an order, and the enemy obeys. And the Lord didn't say, oh, go and pick him up. No, he is going to come. He will return. Because they will return from the land of the enemy. There is hope. Christ in us hope for eternity. There is hope. There is hope. Because there is blessing. There is benefits from the Lord. It's open your future. So, on the last day, in the last moment, for your descendants. It is good for us to remember this. We are on the very last moment and in this last moment it's not a moment not to have hope it's not a moment not to have faith 
But it's a moment for have, to have faith, to have hope, to believe. Because the word says, I believe and I'll see the glory of God. So there is hope. The hope is assurance. And the Lord will act, and God will operate. And the blood of Jesus Christ will deliver him and will bring him back into the presence of God, to the house of God. There is hope for you in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen, my friend. That's the word of the Lord for us tonight. The Lord was showing a uh, sister. She has been praying to the Lord, asking for help from the Lord with regards to a son, a daughter. And this son distance or daughter son or daughter distance from the project of God and she's being very anguished regarding this but the Lord was showing that tonight through the imperial praise that from the pleading she's going to be peace comfort refreshing uh, blessing of comfort to the sister so that she would understand that he is in control of her situation of her life the life of her son so that you may rest and you may have hope in the Lord because they will return from the land of the enemy. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
a igreja vai se colocar de pé, uma palavra de glorificação ao nosso Deus. Aleluia. Não vi não. Vás de ótimo, meu irmão. Praise for your promises, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I praise you. We're thankful for your grace, love, and mercy. Yeah, please, your hand, you had, place your hand upon our lives. I serve your name for this rescue, for your our return to your house, your eternity. Praise, ask the Lord that you may bless your people. Give to each one of your servants a night of blessing, your presence, and that you give experiences, visitors in dreams, visions, revelations. Speak to each one about your plan, a project. Reveal to us the needs of the service tomorrow. Bless everything. We pray for a blessing, glorify in the name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, in the grace of the Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, a good and eternal Father, and a sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit. Be with the entire people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Remember, Brandon, you may sit down. Our service is over. Do and who are participating with us on Zoom. If you need a, a prayer and assistance, a few of the brand who are connected with us online, just raise your hand and you will receive the proper assistance. In presence, the brand uh, also, who don't who needs, who need an assistance, a clarification, a prayer, the brand are here at your disposal. Remember, tomorrow, our Sunday school will be transmitted from Brazil, 10 o'clock in the morning. And at 7.30 p.m., uh, we're going to have another service of glorification. Oh, God. Amen. Service is over. Aqui embaixo. Lá em cima. Youth meeting at 8.45. Youth meeting on the upper level.